Hello everyone. In this particular video, we're going to talk about the use of desmartin pyridinine as an oxidizing agent in alcohol oxidations. So this is a continuation of our discussion on the oxidation of alcohols. We previously talked about the use of chromic uh, acid reagent and uh, Swan oxidation for uh, achieving an alcohol oxidation. This is the final video in the series where we're going to use uh, DMP, uh, des martin pyridinine, which is commonly used, uh, commonly known as DMP for achieving the oxidation of alcohols. Now DMP is also a versatile oxidant. Uh, it can be used for the oxidation of primary alcohols to aldehydes, so it is a selective uh, oxidant because it stops at the aldehyde. It does not do the over oxidation to the carboxylic acid. Uh, similarly, secondary alcohols are converted into ketones. Uh, I've put the structure of desmartin pyridinine here. Uh, it is an iodine based reagent uh, with uh, several acetate groups on it. And one thing I want to point out here is that this is an example of a hypervalent iodine reagent because the iodine is in a plus five oxidation. So contrast that to all other iodine or like halogen compounds you've seen where the iodine or any other halogen forms uh, one bond. Uh, but this is an example of a reagent where the iodine has five bonds to it. So if a primary alcohol is treated with DMP and the reaction is typically done in uh, dichloromethane, it's a good example of a solvent to use. Uh, DMP, then the primary alcohol is converted into the aldehyde. Secondary alcohols are converted into ketones under uh, similar conditions. Let's look at the mechanism of this reaction, how this works. So if we use, again, a secondary alcohol to sort of uh, look at this mechanism, to talk about it, uh, the first step involves the attack of the secondary alcohol on this iodine center with the simultaneous expulsion or loss of one of these acetate groups. So there are three acetates on that iodine. One of them is lost. And this brings us to the first intermediate where we now have the iodine with two acetate groups. There'll be two acetate groups on it and uh, the rest of the molecule is still there. And the iodine is now bonded to this alcohol oxygen, which is connected to everything else. And the hydrogen is also there. Um, and this oxygen has a positive charge. Now, along with this, notice an acetate group was released. So the acetate group is here. Now in the following step, this acetate groups, this acetate group can go and deprotonate that hydrogen, okay? And put the electrons back on the oxygen to get rid of that formal charge. So that will bring us to the next intermediate where we have, where we have uh, everything else except for that hydrogen on the oxygen. Okay. Uh, now, as far as the, okay, I'm going to put uh, it here. There it is. Now I'm writing it a certain way so that I can show the mechanism here. I need a little bit more space here. Uh, so there's that alcohol without, without its uh, hydrogen on the oxygen. So the oxygen now has no formal charge, that hydrogen is lost. The iodine has one acetate group and then a second acetate group. I'm actually going to draw out this other acetate group. I've given the structure of acetate over there. So it's an O with a C double bond O and a CH3. Okay, there we go. 
Okay, so now from here, what happens is there is an intramolecular deprotonation of that hydrogen. Intramolecular meaning it happens within the molecule here. Okay, so essentially uh, the acetate group that is part of the molecule here, that can go ahead and deprotonate. So this oxygen can use a lone pair to get that hydrogen off that alpha carbon. Notice that's the alpha carbon. Simultaneously, that bond falls into the space between the carbon and the oxygen to give us the double bond. Okay, that is what will be the that is what would be the double bond in the future. Okay. And these electrons here go to the iodine. And simultaneously, this electron pair goes to the bond between that carbon and oxygen. So that's too many electron pushes going on simultaneously, okay? So the oxygen from this acetate group, and it is this acyl oxygen, that's called the acyl oxygen, grabs the proton, proton that starts the uh, process, it deprotonates. Electrons from there fall into the space between the alpha carbon and the oxygen to give us the ketone. Uh, the bond between the oxygen and the iodine here, that cleaves, electrons go to the iodine. And the bond between the iodine and this acetate, that goes to the uh, bond between this oxygen and the acyl carbon. So that when we are done with this, and when we rewrite everything, what we are going to have is, we will have our DMP reagent. Uh, the iodine would still have one acetate group on it. There were two electrons that came to the iodine. So we're going to put two electrons on there. So the iodine now only has one acetate group. It has a lone pair on it. It is connected to everything else. Plus, we get our ketone. So we'll have our ketone formed, which is the double bond between the alpha carbon and that oxygen. Okay, so the alcohol oxygen becomes this carbonyl oxygen. And in addition to that, this fragment here, the acetate group, that becomes an acetic acid, okay? It comes off as this. So that's the hydrogen from this alpha carbon, which that acetate group deprotonated. So we get our ketone, we get acetic acid, and what we can call a reduced iodine reagent. So if you compare that to the starting material, the DMP, the iodine now is only in a plus three oxidation state. So it's still hypervalent iodine, but in a lower oxidation state. So keeping with the theme of what we've been seeing, when one of the species is getting oxidized, so the secondary alcohol got oxidized to the ketone, simultaneously, there has to be something else that will get reduced. So the hypervalent iodine reagent, reagent, which started off with an iodine in a plus five oxidation state, now goes to a plus three oxidation state. So it's reduced by two electrons. So that's a common theme for all redox reactions. So that's the DMP oxidation suitable for oxidizing both primary alcohols and secondary alcohols. It is a mild selective oxidation. Primary alcohols are only oxidized as far as aldehydes. Bye.